let's consider how ANSYS will find the deformed state of the midline such that the total potential energy of the beam is minimized. So I am switching from talking about the mathematical model, um, which we saw is based on minimization of the total potential energy, to talking about how ANSYS is going to solve it numerically using the finite element method. The first step is, as usual, is discretization. You say, hey, instead of finding how every point on the midline is going to displace in the y direction, I'll do it only at selected points. And to keep the discussion simple, I'll say, I'll determine the displacement in the y direction at that location, that location in the middle, and that location at three locations. And the corresponding values would be let's say UY1, UY2, and UY3. So this, you would say this is node 1, node 2, and node 3. And these are equally spaced, even though it doesn't look like that in my figure. Now, if I have only these three values, OK, so let me draw the axis here. Pardon my chicken scratch. OK, let's say UY1 is 0 and UY2 is some value here, and UY3 I'll exaggerate it, and you'll see in a second um, why that is. And now if I have only those three values, okay, I have to connect. So in between that, the, the middle line looks like that, um, and then I have to connect this like that, and I get a slope discontinuity over here. And we saw, in, you know, when we did this for temperature interpolation, we also got a slope discontinuity. In that case, it wasn't a problem. Here, it's a problem. Why is a slope discontinuity a problem? It's a problem because the slope is related to the rotation of the cross section, as um, you know I've talked about before. So, if the slope is theta over here, um, then the cross section rotates by that same amount, um, and that's why this angle is 90 degrees. And that's an assumption built into the Euler Bernoulli beam theory. So, in this segment, what does the deformed uh, shape, you know, what does the deformed beam look like? So, the cross section here is like that. It has to be perpendicular to that. The cross section here is like that. And it's something like that. Okay? What about this segment of the beam? This segment of the beam, okay, so here the cross section has rotated like that. Now this cross section is also rotated like that, okay, this, this has to be parallel because the slope is the same and you get something like that. Not the greatest of sketches, but you get the idea. And so you see what's happened here. There's interpenetration over here and there's a gap opening up in the beam over there. That's not physical, okay? Because you, what this is saying is if the slope is discontinuous, the cross section, you know, you can have two rotations of the cross section of the same location, whereas they rotate. So the cross section, you know, but cannot do this. What it does is, you know, it, both parts of the cross section have to rotate by the same amount. And so what you have to do is you have to avoid these slope discontinuities. And the way you do that is you not only calculate how much the um, the point on the midline you know displaces in the y direction, but you also calculate the slope or corresponding to the rotation of the cross section. Okay. And this is a very subtle point, and I've seen students um, get confused about this, so it it might take you some time to to understand it, and we'll return to this when we are in, in ANSYS. But what's happened in the process? We have reduced the problem to determining three displacements and three rotations. Um, and we need to determine these six parameters such that the total potential energy of the, of the beam is minimized. Let's take a look at that next.